All right then. Over the next couple of days, we're going to be dealing with concentration solutions, or how we express how much solute is in a solution. And there's going to be three ways that we do it primarily, although the most important one is not going to be done today. The other two that we'll, we'll take care of today. And they are important, but they're not the most important one that we're going to use in chemistry. So for us today, we're talking about percent concentration and PPM, which stands for parts per million, but we'll see that in a couple of minutes. Well, we need to know that when we're talking about concentration, we are always talking about the amount of solute in a certain amount or standardized amount of solution. So it's not the amount of solute in the solvent, but the amount of solute in the solution. And there's a kind of a technical reason for that that we're not really going to worry about too much, but you do maybe want to know that definition. And when we're talking about amount of solute, that's kind of what we're going to be changing around. We could be measuring the mass, we could be measuring the volume, or we could be talking about the number of moles of solute. So that's the main thing that's going to change. The idea about standard amount of solution will also change a little bit as well, but generally speaking we're talking about a volume. It might be one liter, it might be a different one, and we'll see that also today. Okay, so when we're talking about a concentration, we generally have to specify the type of concentration, although once we get to the most important one that we use, we'll just be calling it concentration. So if I don't otherwise say this type of concentration, it'll be the other one, which doesn't make any sense now, but we'll eventually do so later. So, percent concentration, we talked about PPM, which was on the title, now stands for parts per million. And then the third one is molar concentration. Now, it's sometimes called molarity, but only really old guys <coughs> will once in a while call it molarity. It's no longer called that. Uh, it's probably not called molar concentration anymore, but, it, it, you know, give me time. Baby steps. All right, let's talk percent concentration. Now, everybody knows how to do a percent, except the problem is, when we do percents, we usually are thinking about a particular context, so we kind of forget what a percent means. Well, percent is parts out of a hundred, really, um, and then if it were a hundred parts, what would they look like? So when you're doing it, there's a couple of ways of doing the math, although they'll end up being the same thing. You always do percents on a test, where you take the part that you got right, divided by the whole amount, and usually you do the times 100 business in your head. Well, all of those values have the same percent. They're all 5% of something. So if those all represented solutions, and we had um, one solute in 20 milliliters, say for example, of solution, or if we had five parts of solute in 100 parts of solution, or and so on and so on. So when we're talking about percent concentration, it's going to be the solute part divided by 100 parts of solution. Well, what do I mean by 100 parts of solution? Typically, volume, but it doesn't have to be. For us, it's pretty much always going to be volume. And when we're talking about the parts that are solute, it's pretty much always going to be a weight or a mass. So our most common percent concentration would be percent concentration, weight, volume. That's the WV part. Okay, and we're going to figure it out by taking the mass of solute, and the mass will be measured in grams, divided by the total number of milliliters of solution, and then we'll multiply that by 100. Now, if you get a volume that's not in milliliters, you will have to convert it to milliliters. So if you had 32 grams of solute in 850 milliliters of solution, it's really easy. You take the mass, divide it by the volume, times 100. And you could do the times 100 part in your head like you always do on tests. If you had 2.5 grams in 1.6 liters, well like I said earlier, you need to convert that volume into milliliters and then you do the math the way you would do it. Now if you want to set it up a little bit differently, okay, that's fine too. Right? You could set it up as a ratio as you saw a little bit earlier. Well, we could also have a percent concentration volume volume. And we would do that if the solute was likely a liquid. Now we're not going to have too many of those, but if you did, you would take the milliliters of solute over the milliliters of solution. And you'll actually see that one sometimes. If you read the, a bottle of vinegar carefully, it will say something like uh, 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 percent concentration by volume or something like that. 
Uh, you'll see it other places too, but generally speaking, we're not going to have volume volume concentrations. But anyhow, if you did and you had 18 milliliters of some solute, some liquid solute, in that much solution, you would do the math the same way we did before. So the math is the same. What's different is the units that you're measuring your solute. Now you could perhaps have both a solid solute and a solid solution, uh, like an alloy or something like that. So you would then want to take the masses of each because it doesn't make sense to measure volumes of solids. You measure masses of solids. Makes sense. But the idea is the same and the math is the same. So you would take the mass of solute divided by the mass, total mass of solution and then you would multiply it by 100 to get it so that it's parts per 100. Too easy. It doesn't get much easier than that. Parts per million is a little bit different. And one of the things about a parts per million is if we think about a percent as a parts per 100, so you've got well, 100 parts of solution, and how many parts of those would be solute? Now we need to have a million parts of solution, and how many parts of those are solute? So the only time you'd really use that is if you had a very, very small amount of solutes. So it wasn't enough to have 100 parts, you needed to have a million parts of solution. And you'll find those uh, concentrations when you're talking about if you're on a bottle of, uh, sorry, a bottled water, the label there, um, water contamination, and we'll actually use it in class to, for that. But also if you're looking at uh, amounts of, of contaminants, it pollutants, for example, in air, air pollutants. Um, and what's really important for us to know is that it's now milligrams per liter. Uh, particularly when we're talking about water contaminants or bottled water stuff, it's going to be milligrams of solute in liters of solution. Okay, and so it looks like that. And for parts per million, which you already know, if we had a, a question like this. If you had 32 milligrams in 2.6 liters, you do the mass divided by the total volume and you get the parts per million. It's really, there's, there's nothing to it. It's actually pretty simple math. Okay, so those are the first two types of concentration. It is fun, what are you talking about? This first two types of concentration, we need to keep all three straight. That's going to be really our challenge. Uh, the next one coming up really soon is going to be molar concentration because now we're talking about moles of solute. And for us in chemistry, moles of stuff is our primary count. All right, so we'll talk to you in class.